Hello and welcome to Trim Range. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Microsoft recently introduced the Trim Range function along with Trim Refs. And I'd like to talk about these in this video. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we'll just get our bearings. Let's just say we have some data and we want to do a calculated column. For example, maybe we want to subtract this from this. So we go equals this minus this. Enter. And then we fill this down. But then we got to thinking, what happens in the future? What happens if I want to add some new rows? Will this formula automatically fill itself down? And the answer is, well, it kind of depends. For example, one option would be to store this data in a table because tables automatically expand. Another option is just to kind of rely on Excel's ability to recognize this as an issue and to fill this formula down. Depending on your Excel version, that may or may not work. Another option to try to future-proof this worksheet is just to fill this formula down, like all the way down. So you might do something like this. You might use a whole column reference. For example, you might go equals this whole column minus this whole column, enter. And it'll ensure that the difference is calculated for any new rows, but look what it also means. It also means we filled like a million cells with a value. So that could increase the file size and slow down our performance. And so now we have a new way to approach these kinds of situations. It's by using the trim range function. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. So this function will trim empty rows that are before or after our range. And that enables us to use a whole column reference. So for example, equals trim range, all of D minus trim range, all of C. Close function and enter. This time, even though we've used column only references, the formula is only filled down as needed. And next period, if we add a new row, 1000 and 1200, this formula is updated. So this is now a new option. Now let's go back into the trim range function and we'll see that we have two additional optional arguments, row trim and call trim. If we don't specify this argument, the default is both. That means it's going to remove blank rows above and blank rows below the range. If there's any blank rows within the range, those are left in. But we can also be more specific. We can say only trim the leading rows or only trim the trailing rows. And we can do the same with columns. In addition to rolling out the trim range function, there's also some new reference operators called trim refs. So let's check that out in the next exercise. Exercise three. If we didn't want to use the trim range function, we could use trim refs. And here's what that looks like. We use our whole column reference with the colon. If we want it to trim leading rows, we would put a dot in front of that colon. If we want it to trim trailing rows, we'd put a dot after the colon. And we can use both dots if we'd like. Minus C to C. Enter. And so that looks pretty funky, but that's the new trim ref operators. And it's very infrequent that we get new operators. The most recent one was the spill reference operator, and now we have this one as well. So depending on how you're using Excel, this could certainly be very handy. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.